Tears of the Kingdom is about to shock the world. I kid you not. We obviously know there is a Nintendo Direct coming very soon, next couple of weeks. But regardless, some people seem concerned that this game isn't going to be as impressive as Breath of the Wild. Or because it's a Switch game, it's not on new hardware, it can't be visually impressive. Or maybe you think you're done being impressed by anything Switch releases. After Scarlet and Violet and the mess of the performance, you're done. There's nothing they could do. But let me tell you something. There's a few reasons that Tears of the Kingdom is going to shock the world. And I know that you might think otherwise because, oh, maybe that's why they're not marketing the game a ton because... Hey, it can't be as impressive. In fact, you're not alone. Kit Ellis from the Kit and Krista podcast were recently on our own podcast, and he stated right there, he actually has they actually have an entire podcast on this topic, but he said on our podcast that one of his predictions for Tears of the Kingdom is that basically we wouldn't be impressed by it. But I disagree. A couple reasons. There has never been a direct sequel to a Zelda game that ever felt exactly the same as the one before it. And I mean that. Think about it. Spirit Tracks doesn't feel anything like Wind Waker. Majora's Mask doesn't really feel anything like Ocarina of Time. And we can talk about, oh, the same Hyrule, or oh, the same this, or oh, the same that. Guys, they have spent a ton of years, six years, developing this game. It is going to feel fundamentally different in many, many ways, and is going to end up being shocking. Now, from a visual perspective, yes, they have worked on new technologies, right? New AI upscaling, FSR being used, and other techniques being used with Switch games today that were not available or not being widely used back in 2017. On top of the fact that Breath of the Wild was made for Wii U and not Switch. They've had six years to build this game from the ground up for Switch and optimize it for Switch and make it visually impressive. We see this already with the clouds. Some people, like Digital Foundry, were originally calling the clouds in Tears of the Kingdom volumetric. Turns out they're not volumetric, but it's a very clever trick using 2D images to create a volumetric effect. There's going to be a lot of these really clever development techniques that Nintendo will have invented specifically for this game. So just from a visual perspective, when we finally get this blowout, which is probably coming in February, it's going to blow our minds just visually. It's going to be a visual feast especially on Switch. You might think you're done being impressed, but just wait. We're not done yet. Beyond that, we have to talk about the game itself. What can they do with this game to impress us? Well, we don't know what they're going to do with shrines or replace shrines or Sheikah Towers, and there's lots of theories about Zonai Towers and all this, but the obvious answer is there's going to be dungeons. And I don't know what form these dungeons are going to be, but imagine that they put the dungeons organically into the world. Think those shrines like the maze or the mushrooms or Eventide Island. Think the shrines that are just organically part of the world. That's what I'm getting at here with dungeons. They could rethink the way dungeons are. Instead of them being closed off like the four divine beasts were, or instead of them being uh, like a traditional Twilight Princess Zelda dungeon or something, it's a more open concept that you find organically that just is part of the world rather than segmented from the world. You're exploring an underground cave, and without even realizing it, you're actually in a dungeon, and it starts to click the more and more you go and the deeper and deeper you get. Or you're in the sky, and, and you know you just see a random door. You go through that door, and in, inside just seems like, oh, look, there's a shop, or there's a this. Next thing you know, it's more intricate than you expected. And before long, it's a full-on dungeon, and there's even holes in the roof, maybe, that you can climb out of and just jump out and start soaring away anytime you want. It would be amazing to me to have this open concept for dungeons where they can still be these temples and these large structures, but they're not, like, confined. You don't feel restricted. Rather, they come up with clever ways to hinder your progress that make sense, and it's not just rain. Rain is cool, but let's come up with some more unique ideas. Now, beyond that, there's going to be abilities, okay? Sheikah Slate abilities, they appear to be gone. Link, so far to date, has not shown any Sheikah Slate abilities. We have seen two new abilities so far, or at least one new ability and one item ability. The item ability was a shield breathing fire. That's really cool. We've had fire objects before, just not with the shields, right? The shields in Breath of the Wild didn't sort of do anything special. They were either made out of metal, they were wood, or they were, you know, whatever, and they had different durabilities. They didn't really do much besides, obviously, your parrying and blocking of attacks. You know, basic things shields do, but now you have a shield that breathes fires. They're going to be one that breathes ice. Is there going to be one that does electric 
electric stuff? Is there going to be some new, you know, type of thing from that new elemental ability? But beyond that is obviously the reversal of time. There's going to be other mechanics, guys. Link is going to be able to do more than just reverse objects in time. He's going to be able to do a hell of a lot more. And obviously, the time reversal mechanic makes you think, what if there's time travel in general in this game? Another thing is people worry about the world, right? Oh, Breath of the Wild 2, this Tears of the Kingdom, it takes place in the same Hyrule, so I can't be impressed by this. Really, really, beyond the visual improvement, imagine a greater enemy variety. Imagine a world that looks familiar... But when traversing is fundamentally different. Imagine a world that's like going from Witcher 2 to Witcher 3. It's just bigger. It's just grander. There's just more going on. You, the Hyrule you think you knew ends up not being the Hyrule you thought it was all along. This is without considering the possibility of a dark world, the possibility of a Twilight Realm, or anything else they might want to bring back a sacred realm. There are so many possibilities that, look, right now, Tears of the Kingdom may not be blowing people's minds. Some of you it probably has. The Sky Islands and the temples, possibilities, the story. A lot of us Zelda lore people are really digging into the trailers and trying to decipher everything we can, but if we fundamentally sit back and think about it, none of the Zelda games have ever been directly the same as the one before so i just i don't see how we can't be impressed with it it's the longest in development zelda game of all time it's using one of the best engines we've ever seen in video game history and it's being built from the ground up for switch look guys it's going to end up blowing our minds why is nintendo waiting because they know they know they know when they blow the lid off on this game marketing wise no one's going to be able to shut up about it. They know it. They're not afraid. They're not hiding. They don't think, oh, we're just going to rest on people who play Breath of the Wild are going to want to play this game and we're not going to market it very much. Oh, no, no, no. When they blow the lid off, it's all anyone's going to be able to talk about. Prepare, guys. Prepare. That moment in Breath of the Wild when you walk out into the Great Plateau and it opens up, and you see this giant, vast world to explore, and then you actually get to explore it any direction you want, any way you want to go, low, high, swimming. They're going to recapture that moment in a completely different way. And this is without me even talking about the possibility of sky combat. Imagine fighting a dragon midair. Can't do that in Breath of the Wild. Imagine multiple enemies attacking you midair. And you're having to navigate that with various mechanics and abilities. I, guys, this is going to, it's going to blow our minds. So just you wait. A little patience. It's a virtue for a reason. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Let me know your greatest hopes and dreams for Tears of the Kingdom. And I'll catch you in that next video.